guys, welcome back. Drip Coach here with Drip and Farm for Poverty, where we don't trust, we verify and operate with integrity and transparency. Today, we're diving into some crypto banter. If you want to know all things related to crypto and from an OG in the space, check out the actual crypto banter YouTube channel. But today, specifically, we're talking about Rand Nooners, uh, the CEO, co founder, and his epiphany on how to avoid losing $134 million in crypto. So stay tuned. So in this episode, like I said, talking about Rand Nooner, the CEO, co-founder of um, Block One, if I'm not mistaken, but more specifically, the actual creator of Crypto Banter um, YouTube channel, as well as being an OG in the space, early purchaser, adopter of Bitcoin, and uh, rubbing elbows with people like CZ Binance before he was CZ Binance, or just CZ, and actually getting the CNBC crypto introduction for a lot of these big figureheads in South Africa. So the dude uh, has been around for a while and quite known in the space. And I, I think you should definitely check out his channel in regards to just kind of a bunch of really valuable content and kind of unfiltered and um, transparent in my opinion, but specifically covering a clip from him and Rao Powell that he talks about crypto cults or drinking the Kool-Aid. And this is specifically a shot at Drip, OG Drip, Drip X, Swap X, any of these, Pulse Drip, any of these community driven tokens um, where you are only allowed to hear one side of the equation and this cost him $134 million. I'll let him explain it to you, but he uses these exact same things that I came to the realization of after the collapse. And it's great to look at these guys and go, okay, here's what we missed and here's the breadcrumbs they're laying out. So I'm gonna play three clips from his talk with Rao Pao here on his insight and epiphany. So we don't want holiday homes. And we literally had so much money that we didn't know what to do with it. And we were making money like crazy. And then Luna. And when Luna collapsed, I had over 50% of my portfolio in Luna and Luna related projects. Okay, so you can imagine that I had over 50% of my portfolio in Luna and Luna related projects. On top of that, I genuinely at the time believed that Luna was going to change money. I had drank the Kool-Aid and I broadcast in my community for months and months and months. And many of my community had followed me into Luna. Like he just said, he had drunk the Kool-Aid. And man, we've used that statement here on this channel before. And many people in these echo chambers are drinking the Kool-Aid as well. And it's just hard to get unbiased because you want to surround yourself with people that think like you and are like you. That literally goes back to our um, animal brain you know, the lizard brain where we were in tribes and you survived because you surrounded yourself with like-minded people that will protect you. So when you actually speak out against that, that literally goes against your survival mechanism to being kicked out of the tribe. And back in the day, you would die. And here you kind of die a digital death because they'll throw stones at you, call you a butter and all this stuff like that. So there's, there's a legitimate survival mechanism bias that makes sense. But when you're talking about your money, I think you just really got to unplug and find another way to try to get this information in. And like he said, Luna unraveled in four days and I lost 25K in UST because like he mentions, many people were saying that it was, you know, the next best thing and it was legit and all this stuff like that. Too big to fail, $40 billion wiped off the board in four days. Yeah, it was shit, but people like him lost way more than I did and you can bounce back. So let's uh, continue his story, so to speak. And as you know, in four days, the whole trade unraveled and I lost over a hundred million dollars. I lost $134 million. It was the toughest, the toughest. I cannot explain to you 
what it's like to lose that amount of money. Like, I just can't explain the feeling to you. Also, I was completely helpless, completely helpless. Why? Because my Luna was staked, so there was no way that I could have sold it. I couldn't have gone short because I couldn't, the, the, the volatility was too crazy and the funding was, was absurd. My Luna got wiped out, but then the rest of my portfolio also got wiped out because, because Bitcoin dropped, all the altcoins went to shit. And I pretty much lost everything that I'd worked for the last five years to build. I pretty much lost it. It was, it was dark. It was dark. And you know what the problem is? Now, to me, that's just an unfathomable amount of money. And my 25K that I lost there, you know, might be unfathomable for others. And 5K or 500, it doesn't matter. It, each person puts in what they can afford. And oftentimes in this crypto journey, it's actually way more than we can afford to lose because you feel so confident in your conviction that you can't fail and you feel it's a safe bet. So you get over leveraged or overconfident and you're again digesting these echo chamber narratives so it causes you to double down triple down because these other influencers out there showing you the money they're making but you have no idea how they're getting it and if it's such as these community projects i told you about they're just getting it from referrals and things of that nature or they were paid literally by the developers and we come to a clip of him later where um, yeah, the people in his community blamed him, thought he was an insider and thought that, you know, he was making money off of Luna. Nobody benefited from Luna. That just destroyed the entire crypto market that wiped Bitcoin down to 15K. It was nuts. And Rao Pao is basically going to ask him like, yeah, why were you doing this? Why were you taking more risk? We were in the middle of the carnage. Why were you taking more risk? If you'd had all the money, why take all the risk? Because greed, because Luna was the future of finance. Because Luna but because you wanted to be a billionaire as opposed to. to yes, yeah. but also yes, it, it was about the money, but it wasn't only about the money. It was also because Luna was the future of finance, and and I couldn't un unbelieve it because I believed it. And I'll tell you, like two weeks before Luna went down, Scott Malka was on my show, and I showed him my portfolio, and he said to me, "Bro, de-risk from Luna." And I said, "Where should I put the money?" Solana, I don't think Solana is going to be as good as Luna. He said, just put it into Bitcoin. And I was like, ah, you're dreaming. Luna is much better than Bitcoin. And that's how. <laughs> this sounds super familiar as well. I remember during um, all the other drip forks that popped up and other gamble plays you could get in, you know, people are like, yeah, diversify and do other stuff or whatever, or even um, get into Bitcoin or Solana or ETH and stuff like that back then. You're like, yeah, but why would I get into that when this thing's printing, you know, five, six X more than those are, and it's stable and it's this, that, and the other, like, again, cause you're digesting these narratives and drinking the Kool-Aid. So same thing happened to him. It's like, he was making, yeah, I think off of UST is 20% yield interest on a stable coin, which was not a stable coin in hindsight, but you didn't see any other alternative or anything else you should do. So you're just like, yeah, screw it. I'll stick with that because it's working. And let's hit this last clip. Is when your voice says, why the fuck didn't you see it? Yourself, not, you know, sure, most people missed it. So it's not like, you know, oh, I got it right. But it's the voice inside your head saying, Randy, greed. you thought you were good, greed. but you didn't see it. Greed, greed. It is not wanting to believe. Now, look, I did a full post-mortem on, on what I did wrong. And I broke a lot of rules. Like, like uh, I broke the rule of diversification, which, which now I live by. No matter how much I believe in Solana or how much I believe in ETH, none of them will ever be that part of my portfolio ever again. Never, because I've never been in that position again. Um, also, it's when you believe in something, you only want to see the one side of it. And what I realized is that actually the one side of it is completely useless, and all you should be listening to is the critics. And there'll probably be a hundred critics that, and you'll hate everything that they have to say, and you won't agree with it. But you should spend. 10 times the amount of time reading about the, reading the, what the critics say than what the people that actually believe in your views. That was. I think that's the most important piece of this lessons learned. So yeah, he did say greed and yes, of course, greed and diversification and risk allocation can avoid a lot of these things. But that piece right there is listening to the critics, not the trolls. But listen to people that are actually creating an, uh, a legitimate foundational opinion that's different than yours. And that was the problem that I didn't want to see with Drip. And that's why I've been shunned in a lot of these new communities, because I'm showing you behind the scenes how the math doesn't math or how the devs have changed things or how things are not working. And then you're called a futter and you're literally just burned at the stake because 
they cannot get their head out of their own ass and listen to other arguments. And that's what costs Rand Nooner here $134 million. And I learned those lessons. So that's why now I'm sharing that, like the stuff I showed you with SwapX, the way they did the, the NFT raise and the lack of transparency they've been doing. And now this push towards, hey, we're putting out this new thing that had nothing to do with our roadmap because of some BS about things taking longer than we thought or whatever. Like, it's not the whole truth. I don't believe it. But that's the critic side that you should be willing to listen to. But if you jump in the chat, it's just like, oh, bullish, 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 we're all going to the moon. It's like, no, that's that's not how this works. It doesn't matter how much you want to sing it and wish it to be so, that doesn't negate reality. And then the same thing in the DripX community. So I showed you literally, I got in like day one, hour one, within the first 10 minutes, and I got wrecked in one bag and the other one is maybe gonna break even. So it's 50% loss when you combine the two. Well, they don't wanna hear that. It's like, ah, well just wait till the bull run, wait till BNB runs up, wait till Pulse does this. It's like, no, 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 that's not what's happening right now. Like you need to be willing to listen and see the actual facts from the other side. Chad, I, I don't say that, you don't need either that. You can just get wrecked again over and over and over again and never learn the lessons. Like that's completely possible. And that's what a lot of people will continue to do. Let's finish this up with them. One of the biggest mistakes that we made on Luna is that anyone who, who didn't believe or who criticized was shunned by the community and, and by me. In the Luna situation, they were attacked. Yes. Um, but, and what I learned... Sound familiar? In DeFi projects, that's the ones I just mentioned, yes, you are attacked viscerally because they don't want you to expose the fact that the project has some issues and that only a few small hand of people are actually going to get rich. And if by you pointing this out, you're actually taking money out of their pocket and they don't want that. Now is that, and to be honest, I'm much friendlier with the critics now because I realize that it's actually them that are more important than everybody else that believes. I really believe in Solana, but like, I really, really, really believe in Solana. But if you're a critic of Solana, regardless of how flaky your argument is, I want to hear it. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, and that's another solid point. Like, you know, Raul is really big on Solana and of course, Rand Nooner as well. A lot of the space is big on Solana. But like he said, he just, he wants to hear the critiques, the arguments, because that way he can do 10X the research on that side and actually figure out, is this legitimately going to succeed? Am I over leveraged? Uh, what is the potential black swan events that surround this? My think about this is I, I build my conviction to get into a position. And then it's my job to stress test it. I don't want to hear everybody confirming my bias. I, at first, that is a smart man. <laughs> and unfortunately, I didn't learn that lesson. I wanted to just hear people confirming my bias and I sought out more and more confirmation bias information. And I shunned the stuff that was contradictory to my opinion. And again, that just goes back to our survival instincts. But now, I believe in the anti-fragile aspect. So the more that I can beat against this thing and the stronger it get, then that's the thing I want to be in. And that's where Bitcoin comes in because it has been stress tested over a decade and countries throwing resources at it, trying to destroy it and nation states and stuff like that and governments and fall, fake news narrative, all sorts of stuff. And it continues to just defy the odds. So that's my lessons learned. Um, and I definitely want you guys to check out Crypto Banner's channel, but hopefully in this cycle, you're going to avoid the cults and the narratives. And if you are in one, then at least like Rao said, stress test it, seek out the other information, do your research on that, look for the other channels and listen to that information. As long as it's presented in a kind of uh, factual, grounded, truth, transparent way, not just an opinion bias, then you should, if you want to succeed, look into it. All right, that's all I got. Smash that HBO special, help brother out, like, subscribe, comment down below, and until next time, lift daily and achieve your impossible. See ya. Want to pay your in real life bills with crypto? How about send crypto directly to anyone with a bank account? Spritz Finance is a decentralized solution to be your own bank and connect your crypto earnings to real-world bills and payments. They do not take custody of your assets and allow support on multiple blockchains and Web3 wallets. Sign up below using my referral link and you will get $50 back when you make your first $50 bill payment with crypto. Additionally, I will be using referral bonuses to airdrop, donate, or burn based on community feedback. Sign up now.